The situation with Nigerian political parties has been bogging the minds of Nigerians. Right from the national chairman of the ruling All Progressives Congress, Ablai Ganduje, who is facing intra party squabbles in his state, Kanu. The Labour Party has its own fair share of the crisis, with Comrade Julius Abure in an, un an unending face off with the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC. And then the People's Democratic Party, PDP, who analysts argue may be going through a make or mark process with dissenting voices coming loud and steady from its National Assembly caucus, the Nwike and the Atiku Cold War, and other matters arising. Are these political parties ready to play politics without bitterness? Time, and somebody will ask, time will tell, or even the next election cycle will tell. This is the Eastern Eye, and I'm Alex Obodo. <music>
It's not one peculiar with Kano State. It's also happening, it happens in some other states. If not suspending you from the party, it should be impeachment of a deputy governor or whatever. So it's always been like that in Nigerian politics. So Kano State, being it, being what it is, is a very powerful state with very powerful uh, politicians from different parties, even since the time of Amino Kano to date. Kano State has not been a state that uh, the, whose his politicians could be swept under the carpet. Ganduje was not his was not a strong politician in Kano before now, before he was made the governor of Kano State. And when he became the governor of Kano State, based on his alliance with the president, he became popular and powerful. But today he's no more on the seat. So all the people he fought, I think they are the people fighting him. Mm. No, sir. No, sir. When the, 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 the people you, you, you fought are now fighting you because you've lost the immunity. And uh, one would look at the APC and think that maybe just because he is the national chairman of the party, that he is supposed to be well grounded in his word. Um, they say politics is local. Did he fail to localize his politics? And one will be wondering, because if someone as powerful as a, a governor before, what would now warrant his uh, word to suspend him. suspend him? Remember this has happened with Adam Soshimile and he did not survive it. Yes. Is that bell ringing again? Like I said, ordinary world chairman in your state, before he could institute an action that would suspend a national party chairman. Something is wrong somewhere. Like our people normally say, that antelope that is dancing at the center of the road has a hunter somewhere that is beating drum for him. So the word chairman or the word escorts that initiated the suspension of, Gan of Ganduje, they have very strong backing from other politicians in their own party in Kano State. And even those who are not in the same political parties with him, but they have alliance with either the world or the local government or the state exclusive of APC. It's possible that it could influence the suspension of uh, Gandhi in order to uh, put him on balance and make him irrelevant in politics of Kano State. Mm. So something happened. And that thing that happened, like I said before, is a result of what he did when he was in office. And of course, when he was in office as the chairman, and also as the party chairman of APC. So you, you, there's most of the time, the winner does not take it all. There are small, small elements that you may think that they don't matter, especially the, in the world. But they matters. I have there are cases whereby even some uh, escorts of some political parties, their names were removed from uh, um, word registers, and when they try to argue, uh, nothing could be done. So, Kano State is not unpeculiar with other states. And that is a lesson for anybody who is in office, either as a chairman or governor, to ensure that he has a very good alliance with his world, with his local government, with his state, and even the national. So it's a good lesson. Mm. All right, then. So let, let's move to the Labour Party. They seem to be having their fair share of crisis. Julius Abure is facing the angst of the NLC. Well, while the the, the somebody, a lot of people will be asking, will the party survive this crisis? He survived, well, I don't know whether he has survived it, the, uh, the crisis brought about by uh, the, 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 the chairmanship tussle. They had with uh, Jill, uh, our papa, the Apapa faction. And then he had accusations of uh, misappropriation of funds of the party that they generated during the elections, the, the nomination forms and all that. And then... The latest one is from the NLC. They are saying that they want him off as the chairman of the party. Is it 
don't you think they are having one crisis too many in Labour Party these days? Alex, I want you to believe me that there are, there are external forces that is fighting the Labour Party, not just the party itself. Like I said some time ago, there's difference between obedient movement and Labour Party. The obedient movement seems to have, um, how do I put it? Uh, it seems to have, uh, I mean, uh, gradually dying down. While the Labour Party itself has a tetrahedral issue, tetrahedral problem, one, some of the members of the Labour Parties are not also comfortable with the party because of funding. Two, some of the Labour Party's members are scouting for employment from the national ruling party, which is APC. And three, power calls you in a, in a Labour Party who want to be the, uh, the local government chairman, the state chairman, the national chairman. And of course, Abule and the OB, OB faction. That's why I say power tozo. So the level party, sorry to say this, is gradually going into extinction. And uh, if they don't sit up to address some of this internal problem, by 2007, you may, be, you only, you may only be seeing the level party in the ballot paper. But not that's by 2027 in politics, yeah, in 2027. But not in the physical politics of Nigeria. It, this is interesting. You you are saying this because in Enugu, six of their national uh, House of Assembly members have defected to the PDP, and we we'll hear that some National Assembly members of the Labour Party might also defect to the PDP in Enugu State. Uh, we, we are watching for that. But then there is this talk that quite a chunk of the members of the Labour Party who are in the National Assembly are not really, you know, connecting with the party. Is this an indication that, based on what you're saying, that all is not well with the party and that the party might not survive and remain the formidable opposition that it is right now or that it was in 2023 elections? You know that when the centre cannot hold, like Chine Achebe said, things fall apart. The centre which is um, P2B and the Dati, who are the center, they are no more, um, they are no more holding the party. I was reliably informed that some of the local governments and some of the states, exclusive of labor parties are no more even holding parties. And what's of it all, the elected members of the labor party in different states, are not helping issues. They are no more even calling some of the people the so-called obedient movement that push them to those positions, not to talk of the Labour Party members. So this will be a long way to creating more problem for the Labour Party. And those you are talking that are in National Assembly, they are there looking for their well-being. They are there, even though they, they, they say they are representing their people. But to a great extent, they are no more representing their party. They, 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 wherever they, 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 uh, they, they, the majority goes most of the time, you find out that the minor, minor minorities try to, I mean, uh, queue up. The PDP stands a better chance to survive than um, the Labour Party, even though the PDP has their own problem. You can see what happened recently when... Um, they, they held the, the NEC meetings and the National Working Committee stroke caucus meeting of the PDP. So the Nigerians were looking forward to see a lot of changes, especially when it has to do with the chairmanship. Well, we'll, we'll, come, to so, the, we'll come to the PDP. You know, so, because you I, see, when you have majority, especially in ruling party, you don't expect more anything other than the minor, minor parties gradually tilting towards the majority party to save their positions and, of course, why they are looking forward for the next election. Because being a minor party, minority party or the, uh, uh, you know, or, 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 or their, in, their, in their localities, the likelihood of the winning election 
may not be there again. The popularity of Labour Party in the past election is gradually dying down. So most of them, you see that it's tracing towards other PDP or APC. They try to study what is happening in that locality and see whether is, is it possible for me to win election again? Yeah, but, but what do you think is down to? Because you've tried to analyze this, and a lot of people are saying that, well, that they went into the elections promising things that were not being done by those they on SAT. So exactly what has happened? Do you think that they have performed those, especially those who were elected on the Labour Party platform? From what you've seen in almost a year that they've been there, in various positions, both in the National Assembly and the State Assemblies. Do you think that, based on what you have seen already, that they can say, oh yeah, that there was no mistake, uh, them coming on board through the obedient wave? Um, Alex, to win an election is one thing. And then to fulfill the uh, uh, election promises during campaign, what you promised during campaign is another thing. Whoever wants to perform will perform. I'm aware that there are some very minute of very few of them that actually try to carry uh, carry on with their constituents. There are some of them also that are not doing very well. So you cannot use the wrong ones to condemn the good ones. The same thing in PDP, the same thing in APC. There are people that are actually performing, not because of their party, but because of their promise to their people. So, party does not stop you. If you are, you are taking out of, office, out of office, if you are promised your constituent that if I'm elected into office, I put back pipe on water, electricity, these schools, health centers, and some other amenities, once you're elected into office, Whatever thing that is going to other constituents will also come to your constituents. If you don't push for it, nobody will ask. It. So, party does not stop uh, elected officers at the National Assembly, at the State Assembly from performing. It's not the issue of their party. Mm. Because funding of uh, um, constituency projects is made available to all the con constituencies. Not based on party. The party hope will be on lobbying of maybe a bigger project, but there must be something slated that for your constituency. So it's not issue of party elects. All right. So it's time for us to take a break here on the Eastern Eye. When we come back, we'll find out exactly what is going on in the PDP. Someone will say to be or not to be. Join us after the break. <music> You're welcome back to the Eastern Eye here on Afia TV. We are reaching you live from Enugu, Southeast Nigeria. The Eastern Eye is a program that X-rays the political, social, and economic developments around us. With me, Alex Obodo. So the question is, the PDP are also locked in their brand of controversy. The, the, the question is, how do you think this will end? And another question is, will it ever end? Honorable Nikos, uh, <laughs> will this end? It looks like... Since after the 2023 elections, the center isn't holding the PDP. A lot of people are arguing that maybe some people are lacking the courage to tell truth to power when it comes to what's happening in the PDP. Why do you think there seems to be that lack of will to call out what is wrong and say that it is wrong if they see that it is wrong, by the way? Well, the PDP, I want to actually... Um, let me say, I want to appreciate what the National Executive Council and the, the National Working Committee, I want to appreciate what they did in this past meeting. We are able to carefully handle the sensitive issues in PDP. And most sensitive issues in PDP that were been a bombshell if it was touched was issue of leadership in PDP, issue of uh, changing of, uh, I mean, uh, removal of uh, um, the uh, Damagu as the 
National Party, party chairman, and, and then acting conducting chairman. election mm. for another chairman. So the PDP, they read the handwriting on the wall because I'm aware that most of these factions were actually prepared for uh, a fight. Even if not physical, it should be oral. If not oral, it should be, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> political. So they were very careful, especially uh, the governor of Bauchi State, uh, Bala, in his own uh, system, I really appreciated him. But Nigerians were looking forward to see where discipline would be meted to the early members of PDP. Nigerians were looking forward to see how Damagu will be removed or stepped down and the election conducted to allow somebody from the North Central Geopolitical Zone to assume the office of the National Chairman of PDP. People were looking forward also to see um, you know, a lot of uh, discipline be method. But the PDP caucus, National Caucus, said they are shifting everything concerning leadership till August. So that has actually um, watered or rather brought an icing cooling environment in that caucus meeting. Otherwise, there would be been a, a, an explosion. Or, you know, because there were already interest. It's not hidden that Yeso Mwike is supporting the, the acting national chairman. It's not hidden that uh, Atiku and Kamp, they want the acting national chairman to be removed and another election be done. But thank God, they all came together and everybody supported out to allow what I call, I used to call due process. It doesn't matter how long it takes to bring sanity to the party, to bring corrections. It doesn't matter how long, but the most important is that let the, let the writing be done. Some people feel that uh, some people are, are untouchable. Nobody is untouchable as far as constitution is concerned. I've said it over and over. The PDP should allow the constitution of PDP to stand and then be meted on every members. From what I read today in the, in the social media, they said the um, Wilke Camp wins. But to me, I think it's an issue of uh, no victor, no vanquish, since all of them are you know, heading towards a, a peaceful resolution of the crisis in PDP. So Nigerians are looking forward to what, will, especially the PDP, what will happen in, by August. What are we expecting? We want a peaceful resolution of this minor, minor crisis. And of course, we should, people should call it a shot. Whoever is not doing the right thing, whoever is sabotaging the PDP, either in secret or in the open, should be shown the way out or disciplined or suspended. It doesn't matter whose house is gone. I've said it over and over. But then the problem isn't about people who are in discipline. It's about those who will discipline them. Because it, it, looks, like, it, 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 it looks like in the PDP... All animals are equal, but some are more equal, equal than, than others. And like the same people that shifted this uh, leadership issue, which is the major uh, crisis that is rocking the PDP presently, the same people, I know that God will give them wisdom to do the right thing by that period because people are waiting, people are watching. If it's not being done by that time, maybe the other time we had the... Uh, in NPDP, this time around, you may have a different name again, except if the, the right thing is being done. And what is the right thing? Allowing a proper leadership system in PDP by electing a substantive party chairman, national chairman from middle belt geopolitical zones to assume office. I think that the, 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 the quick question will be, are the PDP members from the North Central actually pushing for this to come to pass? Because I'm not sure I've seen any press conference where they are asking the leadership of the PDP to do the right it thing. It means you are not following... Uh, no, no, no. The, 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 I, I because I know... Group. I, wait, 
Yes, they, they, I they, know. They, I know. They, they I'm were not referring to the jail. I'm not. No, there were the members of mem people from the yes. middle group that joined them. Yes, in what? that 60, 60 yes. members. No, the point is that why would it be Ugochiere be championing that? Because you want to hear them in an isolated way, pushing for inclusion. Because this is a matter of the constitutional uh, uh, constitutional provisions of the PDP. Mm -hmm. So one would expect that the members of the PDP from the uh, North Central uh, Zone will be pushing this on their own. You wouldn't... But sometimes they cannot be a judge in their own case. But, then so, if, but if... The, the, because you mentioned here that the PDP needs to respect its rules. Yes. So would you, would you need to drag all Nigerians into something that is purely constitutional, lay down in black and white, that if the chairman is from my zone and he resigns or something happens, the person who replaces him should come from there. So why is it difficult to do that? Like I said, the 60 members I, I, that were headed by Ugo Chinye, some yes, of them yes, you, I, I, are from that John, geopolitical I, I zone. I understand that. We'll, we'll take a quick break and I'll, so that I'll let you expand on that thought. Is that right? This is the Eastern Eye. Time for another break. When we come back, Honorable Nikos also will expand on what the 60 members, including the uh, members of the PDP from the North Central, what they are asking for. The question is, are they asking for it well enough? Stay with us. Welcome back to the Eastern Eye here on IFA TV. We are reaching you live from Enugu South East Nigeria with me, Alex Obodo. So, I have 60 members asking for one thing, the resignation of Omar Damagong. But then after the PDP met, it looks like Damagong survives and he's still breathing in that seat. He's still, he's still warming up. He's still the acting national chairman of the PDP and there the, the PDP's constitution is still there waiting to be implemented. So, what, what, what next? Honorable Ozansi. The PDP, like I said, they have their program. And uh, they are gradually looking for means of sorting themselves out. That is the reason why some of us who are onlookers feel a bit um, comfortable with the outcome of this, their last meeting. He shouldn't be fighting every time. The 60 member caucus I mean, I, I, from uh, the National Assembly, House of Reps, that actually uh, spearheaded the issue of uh, Damagu's uh, resignations and then installation of uh, a new chairman from the Middle Belt, has met some people from the Middle Belt Ugo Jinyere was just um, a leader of that purpose. And they cannot say no because he's not from that geopolitical zone, that they cannot head this group. So I uh, see nothing wrong in him heading the group. But let the truth be, the truth be said. These people are making a genuine demand in consonance with their constitution. So the constitution of PDP I think that's a, a clause I saw today where they say that there will be a little amendment in their constitution. All these things are aware of trying to bring everybody together. But if the, what has been going on is right, it is not right. There should be a shift mm. of power from the acting chairman to a north central geopolitical zone, whether in acting capacity or in substantive capacity. Yeah. I mean, if, if you read most of the comments on social media after that meeting, a lot of people were expecting that uh, the PDP should discipline Yesun Wike. Yes. And, and this is actually one aspect of the PDP that a lot of people don't quite understand. They say, okay, this is a man that clearly worked against the party. But it looks like the, the party can't just do anything to him. 
and we don't just know why they can't do anything to him. Is is Nyeson Wike too strong for the PDP to discipline? The PDP is treading with caution. Nyeson Wike is not too strong that he cannot be disciplined. But the PDP is trading with caution. Especially when he notices that they are having leadership issues and then they start talking about um, uh, discipline the erring members. The Urushala Sarati, the former Senate president, recently was appointed as the, um, the Peace Committee uh, chairman. The person will do the, that will handle the reconciliations. Five, so, 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 so typically, uh, what, what this is about is it's, it's something that that yes, so we can needs to be disciplined all the same because if if he isn't disciplined, a lot of people will, will, will keep wondering whether the that the PDP whether they have rules. So, because you, you've said now that it would be nice if the PDP respects their rules and allow the North Central produce a replacement for Yochayu, the embattled chairman that actually had to resign. But then, when it comes to disciplined area members, it looks like the party develops clear feet. Is this, isn't this double standard? It's not double standard, Alex. It is not double standard because... The PDP want to handle their cases stage after stage. They cannot be talking about leadership issues. They be talking about discipline. They will scatter the entire house. And that was why somebody at the level of Rushara Salaki, the former Senate president, was appointed as a reconciliation committee chairman. So Mwike is not above being disciplined. This reconciliation to disciplinary committee it is now their responsibility to begin to look at some of these things. And in a situation whereby no case was brought against anybody, the person has no case to answer. But if somebody brings up a case against any member of the PDP, this disciplinary committee members will look at it. We could go score free if nobody reports any case against him. But if the case is reported against him and he's found guilty, I mean, he will face the misery. So you, you think it's possible no concrete case has been filed against Wiki has anybody, within the PDP? Has there anybody who has written, who has put it in writing, send it to the National Executive Council, send it to the National Working Committee that Wiki and group has aired and have done this and done? If they are mere speculation, I'm not defending Wiki, but there should be something in writing. Otherwise, they're supposed to even go to court and you know, um, if they cannot handle, if their constitution cannot handle it, they can even go to the award that they state to suspend them. So there's no concrete, if like the case of Ganduji, if similar case comes up from River State, then we can did this and did that and did that, either from the world level or the local government of the state, they will suspend we and the thing will move up to the national and the music starts from there. So you should not be working on speculation. Hmm. Just like he said. Some people may not have the courage or some of the courage to say that so-so thing happens so-so time. You need to produce evidence. Let it not be mere speculation. Like what I had about UK in River State election, we all speculations. But if somebody from that state or from that local government or world puts it down in writing, send it to the uh, 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 PDP expert, uh, 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 and the, the, the case will start with him. So who has done that? If you have evidence, you tell me. <laughs> I'm not a member of the PDP. I, I guess <laughs> You're a journalist. It, it's people who have <laughs> interests. Those are the people that should be filing such things. <laughs> but then let's let's let, let's look at some other political parties okay. that are not APC, PDP, or Labour Party. We have the NNPP, and in Kano State, Governor Abba Yusuf. Abba Yusuf is uh, looking at a situation where. They are probing past administrations in the state. And you know that uh, Umar Ganduja is also a former governor of Kano State. And they, they had to tell them that they have to also move to the time of uh, Kwan Kwaso, that it shouldn't be only the time of Ganduja, because they chose a particular time that they want to investigate. 
So smaller political parties are actually trying to make their impression. And recall that you know the battle to retain that seat in, in the Supreme Court was quite a strong one. Yes. Do you think that the NNPP governor in Kanu is fighting back after getting his mandate? I want to tell you that NNPP, NNPP governor in Kanu State is not working alone. He's working under the instruction of his master, or under the advice of his master, Pampasu. So whatever thing, you don't need to tell a governor where to start his probe. There was a time when a, a more than three or four administrations in a particular state was probed, even though in most cases, documents could no more even be, uh, be found, and it was truncated. So going, probing Kwankwasu is not bad. If you know your hand is clean as the governor of a state, sit and, and then tell the public, tell your state how you rule the state. So, just like what you see that's happening in Kogi State, where Yahya is, was sneaked out by the current Ododo, what is that his name? Ododo. Ododo. Was, Ododo has to use his immunity. To save Yahya from being whisked away by EFCC. To save his political gut. So, no, 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 no. I want you to look at it. Nobody tells a governor where to start his probe. Wherever the governor feels that things are missing, that's where he starts. Even if he says he should go to Kwakwa, so you bring Kwakwa's document and clear him that Kwakwa has no case because he is the, Kwakwa is the godfather of the current governor of Kano State. So, bringing in Kwakwa's case is, uh, I mean, it's a waste of time. Their target is Ganduje, and they have evidences. They may have evidences. That's why they're insisting that Ganduje should be proved. When, when Governor Abba Yusuf took over, he even knocked down some structures in Kanu just to say that whatever that structure meant did not align with what Kanu State stands for. It yeah. happened happen in your own state sometimes, ago, so <laughs> it's not a player to Kanu State. Yes, you know? no, we're not saying because, you know, what you see when another political party succeeds a sitting governor. So we see these subtle things happening. And coming down to the southeast, there is, there is a mix of political parties now in charge in the southeast. Okay. In Enugu, it's the PDP. In Anambra, it's the All Progressive Grand Alliance, APCA. In Eboy and Imo, it's APC. And in Abia, it is the Labour Party. So will this cocktail of parties actually cook something delicious for the southeast? Or is it going to be too many varieties spoiling the whole cuisine? Uh, sometimes uh, it's good to have varieties of political parties. It gives room for competition. Like what the Abia state governor said sometimes ago, he said, after governing Abia state, that other states will go back to go and stone their governors based on the uh, infrastructural development. Did, did he in, say in, that? Yes, it was in news. That mean was he, it, said, was he on video saying it? It was on video. It was on. He said after his tenor that other people from different states, seeing what he, ha he has done in Abia State, will go to their state and ask their governor questions. Is it not the same um, governorship uh, position they occupied that he occupied? I'm just using that as an example. So it's good when you have APC. You have the, I mean, you should have polit different political parties. It's not necessary that the entire Southeast should be PDP or APC. And so uh, you look at Omahi when he was in, in Ebony State. Omahi performed creditably. I am not from Ebony State, but Omahi showed the spirit of Ebony by the infrastructural development, especially the road networks. And that was what gave him currently the minister for works. So other governors should equally, uh, you know, showcase a, a different thing to prove, yes, their own party is actually in charge and their party is actually doing something for the populace. So having different political parties has nothing to do with the development, you know, program. You know, if you're in PDP, work for your people. If you're in APC, work for your people. If you're on level, do something for your people so that posterity will at least have a record to keep for you. 
when you are no more the governor, when you have left office, there should be something down. Say, when this man was the governor, look at what he did. When the person was governor, look at what he did. So, a lot of uh, when you come to go to Mama Put, some people that eat say put put put, put, uh, put uh, uh, varieties of soup. So it's good. I like it. Mix it. Yes. If everybody becomes PDP, we'll be on the same train. Who gets to the president from time to time? If you are in a, if you are a, a PC government is in a, a, a southeast, you have access to the president most of the most of the time than those who are from other parties. So there should be varieties. Hmm. I support that. And then that variety, the, the, the point is whether it is actually nailing it for the people. The, the people are asking for the barest minimum. They are asking for good health, roads. They are asking, they are asking for pipe bone water. The question is, are they getting it? Well, that question is left for the individual states to answer. Different states should be able to answer that question, whether they are getting the water, getting the electricity, whatever. Like in Enugu State, where we are today, you are seeing that the governor of Enugu State is actually battling pipe bone water. He promised him, the promises he made from the period he assumed office, he's keeping almost 80% of the promises when it comes to water, when it comes to road. He, I'm not saying he's the best. I'm not saying he has done exceedingly, but there's evidence on the ground that Pitamba is working. It doesn't matter who source is God. It doesn't matter who you give a prayer, who you did not give. But on the ground, you see them putting this uh, uh, 12 inches pipe in different corners of the state. You see different roads, even some street roads that were abandoned, even some local roads that were abandoned, even areas where road never existed before. You know the link road they try to put between uh, um, Obahu across to the other side. Road never existed. I mean, he's trying. He may not have done. 100%, but judging him, assuming they say there's no governance today, is on record that at least he has put something in place in any state. So, as we end this program today, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious about some of the issues that are precipitating to the surface, especially in the PDP. And you mentioned the other day that they deferred some, something to August. And do, do, do you hope that by August, that the wish of the North Central PDP members will be granted by allowing them to have someone from the North Central occupy the position of the chairman of the PDP. Since the UCIU had to had to go go down because of all the tussle. Well, we are not the, the mouthpiece of uh, the North Central, but we are looking at the constitution of PDP. Nigerians are looking at the constitution of PDP. It doesn't matter who is supporting. Uh, Demagogue to remain. It doesn't matter those who don't want him to remain. But the right thing should be done. I'm not only going to North Central geopolitical zone. Pick, picking a pulpit from that place is as good as not having anybody from there. So PDP should look inward to look for somebody who is very much qualified and versatile in uh, national po politicking and ensure that that person will not disappoint PDP in 2027. Mm. So we are looking forward that by August, some of these skirmishes that have been, you know, uh, coming up as rumors and whatever will, will, will be brought to rest. So do you think that Umar Ganduje will survive this particular crisis that is coming up against him? Mm. Remember that Adam Soshimo didn't survive his own, despite his... His ability to speak and or you know politic, I don't want, he, he I, I, went down. I don't, do, you, do, you, do you think that it will go that way? Do you think that Ganduje will survive this? Ganduje may survive it because of his alliance, because of his uh, political arsenal, because of his uh, uh, you know closeness to the center. Ahead, uh, before you know it. You see one or two people from the center that will call the governor to order. And then they stock it and the thing will die natural death. Politics, in politics, you don't have permanent friends, you don't have permanent enemy. It comes and it goes. So even if they probe Ganduje, Ganduje will not go to jail. He will only go and answer his case. If they move the case to court, he go to court and win. So it's better in a round table that that's case of Ganduji is handled in Kanu State. All right. That's a good place to leave it. Honorable Nick Ozansi, public affairs analyst 
and okay. former local government chairman you do local government any state as always thank you for your analysis and insights on the eastern eye thank you alex thank you and thank you viewers and that's the program for tonight thank you for watching up next is Anka with favor my name is alex obodo good night Thank you.